So in some big roster news for the Baltimore Ravens, and oh, don't don't mind the shirt. I'm just willing and able to help out Zach. Or if you, if you need any assistance with anything. You need me to be an additional coach, Baltimore Ravens? You want to hire me? I got you. I can be an extra set of eyes. And look, I got four of them, so I'm ready. But anyway, in big roster news for the Baltimore Ravens, they have officially, as we all expected it to happen, but it hadn't been official yet till now, but they have officially activated Arthur Millett to the 53-man roster from injured reserve. So he is back. And hopefully, Arthur Millette just being back on the official roster, that can help Ravens start catching some picks. Marlon Humphrey, and this is some good timing, too, because we don't know the status of Marlon Humphrey yet. We should know it between today and tomorrow. John Harbaugh, he'll have his presser a little later on, and then we'll get to hear from him. So he should give us a status update on Marlon Humphrey. I ain't really worried about it. I actually think he'll be good. I think he'll be straight. Of course, he was doing the IG Live yesterday. You know, with us Ravens fans, we look at every little thing. And when that camera went down and we saw his feet, I ain't see no cast on him. I ain't see him walking funny. He wasn't limping or anything like that. But, hey, I ain't no doctor. But, anyway, Arthur Millette being back to the active roster, this is a good thing. Because just in case, possibly, maybe, if Marlon Humphrey is not a full go, then they do have somebody that has plenty of experience, is a starter, and can play in the slot. Arthur Millett, cover corner. Yeah, all right. Uh, but Arthur Millett, I think, in my opinion, his specialty is playing a slot, but also blitzing. He's a good blitzing corner. Uh, so he just brings that extra element for the Baltimore Ravens defense. So Nate Wiggins, he'll continue to be out there. Arthur Millett, he'll get into the mix now. And again, every, everything depends on Marlon Humphrey. Of course, everything depends on Marlon Humphrey. But I do like with Arthur Millette, since he has so much experience in the NFL already, so much experience with the Baltimore Ravens already. It ain't like the Baltimore Ravens are going to have to be like, all right, Arthur Millette, we'll ease you back in slowly. No, they could throw him right back into the lineup, and they'll be just fine. He'll be just fine, and he, he shouldn't miss a beat. But see, the thing with the Baltimore Ravens right now, which is great, is the depth in the secondary, the quality depth. In the secondary, we know as a whole, again, this is why I say it's not the players. It's the scheme that's been the issue. They got players that can play. They got them. Marlon Humphrey, or Darius Washington. Now you can Arthur Millette back. Nate Wiggins, Nate Wiggins, he got burned all the night. Nate Wiggins can play, though. He keeps dropping them picks, though. Nate Wiggins catch the picks. Look, Audarius Washington and Nate Wiggins get with Marlon Humphrey because, you know, Marlon Humphrey, he ain't got no hands. But Marlon Humphrey did say, he said, look, I, I got the best hands on the team. He said it on his podcast. He said he got the best hands on the team. And he went out there on Monday Night Football in front of the world and showed it. that He do got the best hands on the team. I said, okay, Marlo, please share them hands with Audarius Washington because he dropped another pick yesterday. Please share them hands with Nate Wiggins because he dropped, what, two picks yesterday? I'm like, come on, man. Like, get them numbers up. Them stats is there for you. They're there for the taking. Please. But anyway, Ravens had some nice depth in the second day. And we ain't even got to see TJ Tampa on the field yet. Not that that's a bad thing that we ain't got to see, but we ain't got to see him yet. And he's supposed to be very versatile, be able to do so many different things. But this this is a good move for the Baltimore Ravens. So, awesome Millette back officially. Ravens got even more depth officially. And let's see how well he fits in. And if he can really help turn his defense around. Because, look, I get it. Like, the defense, they've been rough. And I know with context, they've been going up against some really good quarterbacks. And what, I get it. This week, you got the Browns. You got either Jameis Winston. You got DTR. You're not going to have Bailey Zapp. You could possibly. But those are your three options. Jameis Winston, DTR, Bailey Zapp. If you can't have a good game against those, any one of those three guys, like with Jameis Winston, he was what, the number one overall pick, though, number two? And Jameis Winston, he's not bad. He's not bad. And he's going he gonna to take his shots. Cause I remember we played Jameis Winston. I think that was the, the, the game where Flacco had, like, five first-half touchdowns against the Bucks in Tampa. It was a while back. Obviously, it was a while back because Flacco was still the quarterback. But, um... I think we played Jameis Winston in that game. And then I think we played him another time, too, in Baltimore, I believe. But anyway, so Jameis Winston, he ain't bad. He's going to take his shots, though. He, he gonna, he gonna, and, again, with Jameis Winston, one of the most dangerous things I always say, 
Browns are in the dumps right now. They're doing terrible right now. They just lost their starting quarterback, even though he was playing bad too. But they just lost their starting quarterback, so they've been doing all kinds of bad. Jameis Winston ain't got nothing to lose. He ain't got nothing to lose. Well, he go out there and have a bad game. What are they going to say? He ain't the quarterback no more? No. DTR, he go out there, have a bad game. What are they going to say? Oh, you ain't the quarterback? Like, they ain't got nothing to lose. So that makes them dangerous because they're going to be willing to take chances. They're going to be willing to go for it more on fourth downs. They're going to be willing to do all type of risky stuff because their season is over. They already traded away Amari Cooper. Uh, Zadarius Smith could be next. Miles, get, uh, we'll see. But this is a perfect game to have a nice, uh, it's a nice confidence booster game for the Baltimore Ravens. So please have your confidence boosted. But welcome back, Arthur Millett. Thanks for giving a boost to this secondary that. Needs some help, big time. Now we hear my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. Let's get straight into it. Forget them picks. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Amp? He said, hope you and the family are amazing. Oh, I like that. I like That's a nice way to start off the morning. That's a nice way to get us going. I appreciate that. I love you, Anthony. Appreciate that. He said, so I'm sure every Raven fan feels great after winning five straight. Yeah, that's crazy. Five straight games. That's a lot. That takes a lot to do. Anyway, he said, but we also need to be worried about our defense. Oh, we all are. He said, correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we have 11 draft picks this coming up draft. We sure do. 11 of them things. 11. He said, uh, we don't need all those picks. I think it's time for the Ravens to make a big trade for either an elite pass rusher, uh, Max Crosby, Micah Parsons, or any other big name, and maybe another cornerback. We can't have one go down and not have a solid backup. See, it's timing. Timing. Arthur Millett, he just got back. And again, right? Ravens got a lot of corners. They got Marlon Humphrey. They got Brandon Stevens. They got Arthur Millette. They got Ardarius Washington. They got Nate Wiggins. They got TJ Tampa. They got a lot of corners. They got a whole. But anyway, continuing. He said, um, I think our offense is amazing, but defensively, we can't keep putting our offense in these high scoring games. Even though our offense can score, just want your thoughts on this take. As always, God bless and trust. Hey, I wouldn't mind. I, w I, w I wouldn't be mad at that at all. They got a Max Crosby. Oh, you, you think I'm going to be complaining? No. No. And they apparently checked in on Zadarius Smith, but again, I wouldn't be mad if they checked in on another Browns defensive lineman, another Browns defensive end. Hey, might as, might as well. It, it couldn't hurt. It couldn't hurt. So, yeah, defense, they got to get it fixed, though. They, they got to get it fixed. But again, a pass rush was not an issue earlier this season. It was not an issue. And Ray, Ravens got a lot of bodies at pass rush, but right now they're just not getting the same production that they were getting earlier in the season. So... Again, what's the issue? Is it personnel? Or is it scheme? I think it's the latter. Great offense. Spooky defense. Next question came from my guy, Sean. He said, hello, Engraven. Hello, Sean. I hope everything is going well with you. What a game that was against those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lamar in primetime always shows out. Uh, yeah, when the lights are the brightest, Lamar Jackson be coming through. He said, we got another Jackson 5, which was great to see. It sure was. Uh, it's so good to finally see Bateman show off the talent I always knew he had. Derrick Henry had another monster game. In my opinion, he is the MVP of the league so far. He's on pace to get 2,000 yards, which will make him the first player to do so with multiple franchises. Mm. Derrick Henry, the, lead, the MVP of the league so far. I wouldn't say that. Um, I would still say that's for Lamar. Um, but Derrick Henry has been amazing. I mean, he, he could have second place in the MVP voting. If he wanted. I mean, anyway, he said, uh, the one thing that is scaring me is the defense. <laughs> I think, yeah. You should have put the one thing that is scaring us. Not just you, because it ain't just you. It's all of us. Uh, he said, our pass defense is so bad. The middle of the field is always open, and teams seem to easily beat us going deep. What can we do to change this? I hope we're able to fix this going forward because we are really clicking offensively. Appreciate you reading and answering my question, and have a good day. No, you have a great day, Sean. I man, I, I really love y'all because y'all are getting today started with all this energy, all this positivity, and, what, and I know it helps when the Ravens win, but appreciate y'all a lot. Seriously, though, man. Um, somebody mentioned this in a video yesterday in a question just to make stuff more simple, make it more basic. And I'm like, man, that's such a simple solution, but I think it could be very effective just to sort of just, yeah, just make it basic. Make it vanilla if you have to. Just allow the Ravens to get better at the basics before you start adding all the sexy stuff and whatnot to the defense. So that would be my suggestion, too. Next question came from my guy, Davin, from b -more. He said, uh, my question is, by the looks of Adam's face in the picture, do you think he is wishing that he went to the Baltimore Ravens? No. No. Let, let him stay over there with the Jets. I Like, look, man, 
He he knew what he was getting into. He wanted to go be with his boy, and I respect it. He wanted to go be with Aaron Rod. All right, cool, no problem. And he's there. So whatever's happening over there, that's on him. He got to deal with it. He said it's crazy. Two different teams uh, he's been on, and he lost to the Steelers twice. That's on him. Next question came from my guy Marcelo. He said, hey, Engraven, thank you so much for answering my question in the last video. No, you ain't got to thank me for that. I appreciate you even sending a question in the first place. So I appreciate you. Uh, he said, quick question, what are you looking for or expect in the future for the Baltimore Ravens secondary? Sending support from Mexico. Much love and God bless. I love Mexico. Mexico is amazing. Beautiful beaches. The drinks are amazing. And, and, and they like, they be hooking you up with the drinks too. They, they, they ain't cheap with it. They like, anyway. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, um, for the secondary, uh, Arthur Millette is back. So that's good. So even more quality depth. Um, but just sh sh showing stuff up, getting stuff right, getting right because th this can't be it. This can't be the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore Ravens secondary like this. Like, look, we ain't asking you to be locked down. I mean, that'd be great if you were locked down, but just better. J just better. You ain't you ain't even got to be a top five defense. You ain't got to be that. Also, okay, but let's let's get let's get better. We don't want to. We don't need to be bottom five. We don't need to be last and pass defense, second and last, third and last. We, we don't need to be in no bottom ten. We don't even need to be in bottom fifteen. It got to get better. So I'm just hoping for improvements slowly but surely like and, and we all we don't want it to be slow we want it to be a quick fast process but realistically when you look at how things have been slow improvements would be better than no improvements so let's start somewhere next question came from my guy Jarvo. he said another jackson five victory monday here are a few thoughts and questions from me number one offense is clicking and it's getting pretty scary scary in a good way uh number two uh, the lj and bay connection is coming together nicely especially with his connection with the tight ends and zay flowers yes because lamar already got, he already had a connection with those other guys now that he got actually got it with bait we've been they've been getting to we ain't just got to talk about potential with bateman no more and i love that i love that that we ain't got to have that conversation. Oh, well, possibly Bateman could be this. Maybe Bateman might. No, he's showing it. He also said, uh, we got to cut down on the penalties on offense and defense. Oh, yeah. We got we to cut down on the legitimate penalties. There's some penalties that just get called and they are not legit penalties. So Ravens can't do nothing about that. Like the holding on Daniel Filet. What? But the penalties that they are actually committing, yeah, they got to cut down on that for sure. Uh, I said, number four, something has to give with this defense because if we don't make it to the Super Bowl, it will be because of the defense. We shouldn't have to go throw for throw with the opposing team to get a victory every game. Yeah, and I mean, last in, in the game against the Bucs, the Ravens didn't have to do that, but it ended up paying off that they did, that they were, because they were up big. They were up. And shout out to them for continuing to score because that was the big difference in that game. They kept their foot on the gas, and that's what they've been talking about. That's what Lamar been saying. We got to keep our foot on the gas, and they did it. Um, but, yeah, the defense got to get better. Uh, he said, number five, my top five, my top plays was all of Marlon's interceptions, the Lamar Jackson signal to Bateman for the touchdown. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Lamar Jackson running beside the king blocking. For, oh, I forgot about that. Lamar Jackson. That boy, like, this how you know. And I saw somebody say it, too. They said, this how you know Lamar don't be running full speed. He don't be running full speed because – when he went from handing the ball off to blocking for Derrick Henry, this man, this man went across the screen and like, like that, like he like flashed through. It was crazy, man. So this how you, like Lamar, don't, he don't be running full speed. Lamar be out, he be out there jogging. He, he be out there playing. So Lamar, we we ain't gonna give us full speed. We want to see it. Anyway, uh, he said a few questions for you. Number one, do you think Orr should go to the booth uh, to coach the defense since the sideline's not working for him? Um. I mean, he could. he could. He could try it. It would give him a better a better view of everything. I, I guess he could try it, but, I mean, him being down there on the sideline, he could be more personable with the players and stuff. The players right there, they could tell him what they see. He could tell him what he sees and whatnot. But, I mean, he could, he could try it. I really don't know if that would make a, such a big difference, but, I mean, it would be worth a try, I guess. Number two, do you think our defensive players are just overthinking instead of just playing football naturally? Uh, I, I think they're just doing too much. I think some some players are just doing to, or sometimes it could be way too little because guys are running wide open. But maybe it's because guys are trying to cover other assignments and and people they just getting so confused over stuff. So let's simplify everything. Uh, and he said number three, would you go for Miles Garrett, Max Crosby, or wait for Micah Parsons? Oh, 
Um, if I had to choose, oh, any, many, mighty mo. Parsons is injured right now, so I no, I can't wait for him because I don't know if he's gonna be back before uh, or after the trade deadline. So I ain't worried about him. But Miles Garrett or Max Crosby, give me either one, e either one, and I oh, I'm happy with either either one. And he said number four thoughts on Ray Lewis comments about LJ is finally maturing and is scary. Well, he's always been maturing. Because he's been getting older, been getting even more experience uh, in the league. So he's always been maturing. It ain't like, oh, he's all of a sudden maturing now in a skate. No, he, he's continued to mature as he's gotten older, as he's gotten more experience in this league. Uh, but it certainly is scary. Next question came from my guy Aaron. He said, uh, hey, man, how was this sweet win? Oh, it was great. He said, hope your daughter's good. Sorry for not emailing you after last week's Ravens win against the Commanders game. He ain't got to apologize for that, man. Don't apologize for that. He said, don't blitz Alpha Lamar. The Ravens win five games in a row by Jackson 5. An unusual record-breaking stat, again, per CBS Sports. And no, I don't work for them, LOL. Uh, is that Lamar has four games where he threw five touchdowns with five or fewer incompletions, which is most in NFL history. Brady, Breeze, Peyton, and Big Ben, they have three. During this streak, Jackson has passed 17 touchdowns and just one interception. He's top five in passing yards, and the king is number one in rushing yards. Is this the greatest offense in Ravens history? It's looking like it. It really is. And that ain't even premature to say after just seven games, but they like so, in so many different ways, man. There have been previous offenses where it's been like, all right, this is Hollywood, it's Mark Andrews. It's obviously Lamar. So Lamar and, but even you go back to the Flacco days, it's, it's Ray Rice, it's Torrey Smith, uh, it's Dennis Pitta. But with the Baltimore Ravens now, they like, it's more than just a big three. It's more than just a big three of guys that they can get production from. So that's what makes them that much more dangerous. He said, the king is the king. Bateman is Batman. Uh, Zay is the, jo the joystick. The defense is talented not to be 31st uh, in passing yards. Man, uh, yeah, they, they are. They're too talented to be 31st in passing yards. Uh, he said, man, Jews is back. For those who said he's washed, he said, hold my beer. Yeah, hey, shout out to Mark Andrews, man. Shout out to Mark Andrews. And we love it. We love it. Because if Mark Andrews is playing good, then that, that just it adds yet another weapon. Because earlier this season, it was looking like, all right, Isaiah Likely, yeah. Charlie Kohler, yeah. Mark Andrews, ooh. But Mark Andrews said, hold up, hold up. So, been nice to see. Uh, he said, I feel like Jackson own, owns the entire state of Florida, LOL. Oh, he does. Uh, he said, I hope Marlo, uh, Evans, and Godwin will be back. They said Evans, uh, update on him, they said he'll be out for the next, like, three, four weeks. Uh, Chris Godwin, we don't know yet. I think he'll be done for the season, though. But we'll see. Well, Marlo, I think he'll be straight, but we'll see uh, later on today when John Harbaugh speaks to the, uh, the presser. He said, with that, my friends, subscribe to the channel and get a man some love by sharing the video and hit the like button. Love you, my friend. Keep it clean with the content. Go Ravens. Win number six is coming up, baby. Your boy. Shout out to Aaron. Appreciate you, man. Speaking of win number six, next question came from my guy Joshua, and he said, how we go six and two. What's up, Engraving the team? Keep it clean. Hope everyone and their families are doing good mentally and physically. We got a Jackson 5. I love this offense and Todd Munkin and Lamar Jackson, the best QB in the league. And he put the best QB in all caps. So he's saying that with his chest. Uh, I was saying the other day, I don't think I've ever went from respectful hate supporting a player to loving them like I do for Derrick Henry. Look at bait. And, and for all of the bait haters, hopefully they are respectfully quiet. All Pro Marlo is that dude. I've been telling his haters we are good. He's our best cornerback, and he came off his injury from last year. Just let him cook this season and look at it. Hopefully he's good, and if not, at least 75% for Sunday, sit him. Uh, the backups can do it this week. I, I agree. I agree, especially with it being such a quick turnaround. Like, Ravens played on Monday night. They got a game six days later on Sunday. So, yeah, you don't want to force it. Uh, with Marlon Humphrey, but if, if he ain't good enough, then yeah, just sit him this week. Um, he said the backups can do it this week. The defense had a better game until eight minutes in the fourth. I generally don't know how they are communicating this bad. This is basically the same defense as last year, minus Stone and PQ and Clowney. They are not communicating well and look confused a lot. Yes, a whole lot, way too much. Um, this has to be a coaching problem because it's not a skill issue. We got playmakers everywhere on defense. That's what I've been saying too. I agree. So again, Zach Orr, you, you already put in a call for Dean Pease. Put in a call for your boy, man. I got you. Anyway, he said, um, I believe our biggest loss from last year, uh, other than McDonald, who I miss, was the DB's coach. Good point. Uh, he was a DB's coach with the Eagles when they went to the Super Bowl, got them right, and got us right last year. Now he's doing a good job in Tennessee, but it might look like it because of the record. Oh, it might not look like it because of their record. Now, the Browns in the AFC North – uh, game record it doesn't matter all of the time in the division this could be a track game for us and if any team can slow us down on offense the Browns and the Steelers are built for it but 
I got us winning. For their offense, uh, four is out for the season and no more Cooper. So they're going to try and get Chubb going. We have to slow him down and contain 85. Oh, David Njoku and three. Is that Jerry Judy? I think it's Jerry Judy. Uh, he said, I don't know who's going to be the QB, but if Winston is, I'm more scared because he will throw the heck out of the ball. He might throw three picks, but he'll have three touchdowns and like 300 plus yards. <laughs> hey, you ain't lying. He said, on offense, we'll need to watch for 95. Oh, Miles Garrett at 99. Ain't that Darius Smith at number six? I think that's Jock. Uh, and that's, he said, that's their playmakers that can affect the game big. Our offense just has to continue doing what they're doing. My question to you is, what do you think the Ravens have to do to, to win this game? And who do you think will get the start? Uh, thanks for reading my long email. Much love till next week. Appreciate you, Josh B. Um, for Ravens to win this game, yeah, like you mentioned, it's a division game. Browns know the Ravens. Ravens know the Browns. Even though these ain't the same old Ravens, and these are actually not the same old Browns because they're actually worse than the same old Browns. This Ravens offense is better than the Ravens offense previously. So while these two, two teams do know each other a lot, uh, there's a lot of stuff that they may not be familiar with. Uh, Ravens just need to keep doing what they've been doing, getting it from so many different ways, getting it from so many different people. Um, Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith, offensive line, like you, you got a task this week. You, 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 you certainly do. You got a tough task this week going against that Browns defensive line. Now, Browns are down in the dumps. Ravens got to keep them there. Straight up, don't give the Browns no confidence. Don't let the Browns, like, get hyped off. No, no, no. Keep them down. Keep scoring. Run the score up. Don't let them in it. Don't let them come back. Don't let them do anything. As far as uh, the quarterback, I, I think we're going to go against Jameis Winston. Um, DTR dealing with his finger issue on his throwing hand. I, I think we'll go against Jameis Winston because uh, he gives them the best chance for success. Um, but I think it's important that the Baltimore Ravens, they actually get to him. Against Baker Mayfield, they weren't getting to him like that. They really weren't. But with Jameis Winston, he's so big and he's so strong, you got to bring him down. So, excuse me, um, Adafi away. Use all that strength. Hey, Matt Abike, like all them boys, man. Just you, you get to Jameis Winston. Interior pressure. I would love to see a lot more Travis Jones. We didn't really see him the last game. He wasn't really out there. And I think he had like a, a season low in snaps. So I don't know what that was about, but I, I don't know. Uh, but have him out there a lot more. The run defense is better when he's on the field. Uh, the pass defense, too, because he, he be getting a little pass rush, too. Like, like Travis Jones, like, hey, like, hey, he, okay now. He could do something. But um, so, yeah, man, like. That's, that's what you got to do. You got to get to Jameis Winston, force them turnovers. Because, yeah, he'll take the shots. And like you mentioned, he'll get a bunch of yards, but, and he'll get some successful plays, but he'll have some unsuccessful plays as well. Ravens got to make sure the unsuccessful plays outnumber the successful plays so they can get the win.